So the words value and astrophotography usually just do not blend well together. Boy, who would have thought how true that statement was over a year ago. And here we are in 2024 and things, including astrophotography are more expensive than ever, but that's my most viewed video. And I definitely suggest you go and watch it. I'll put a link to it up here and in the video description. I get comments all the time on people asking me about the 585, which one they should buy, the pro, or if should they should stick with the regular one and save a couple hundred bucks. The main reason why you're gonna wanna go with the pro version, the cooling of course is very important, so that way you can match the length of light frames with your cooled dark frames. So if you shoot 120 second exposure, you can match that with 120 second dark exposure. And when you put all those together in PixInsight or Astro Pixel Processor, it's going to take all of the noise and all the craziness and all that stuff out of your image and give you the best looking image that you can possibly get. Now, the one big reason why you're gonna want this is something that maybe you don't know about because you might be new to astrophotography, but it's gonna be having all of these extra USB ports here on the back. And yeah, there's only two, but as you build your astrophotography system with things like autofocusers, filter wheels, maybe even the ZWO rotator, if it ever comes out, then these USB ports are gonna be great. Now, chances are you're gonna have this hooked up to something like a mini PC or probably the ASI Air. And the ASI Air only has so many USB ports. The book that comes with it is gonna tell you exactly where to hook up everything, even though you can pretty much use any port that you want. And it's gonna give you the best connectivity experience. So it kind of goes hand in hand with the whole ZWO experience. Now they also are going to talk about this being a performance cooled camera at a budget price. So what makes this camera budget? Really, it just comes down to the actual sensor. Uh, the cooling system, the camera, I mean, it's all pretty much the same kind of stuff, right? It's red, ZWO red, it's got the little fan in there and the heat sink, fine. But the biggest difference is that you're paying more for the larger sensor size, and then as you go up in spending money, you're also paying more for a larger sensor with smaller, better pixels that can capture light faster so you can actually lower the exposure times that you need to capture images with your camera instead of going out and buying a larger telescope which is more difficult to work with and all that kind of stuff and we don't like that here you know i mean i'm just the easy astro images channel we like to do things as easy as we can and get 99% of the results. That's what I've always prodded myself on. Now in that video, what we compared it to was a ZWO ASI 183. And at a couple hundred dollars more, this is a blemished version that a Gina Astro was selling. Again, trying to save a few bucks whenever we can. The good thing that we can see here about the 183 is that even though it is a way older sensor than the 585, on my video, you will see that it allows you to grab more of that screen at real estate. And if you have a wide field or even a narrow field type of telescope, you are going to appreciate that. Now, if you have a lot of clear skies, sure, you can take a smaller sensor and you can always do mosaics. But if you live in areas like me in Ohio here where clear nights are sometimes few and far between, even though lately, it's been pretty clear out and I really have been feeling the urge, but it's just not in the budget right now because of, well, my RC racing hobby. If you're into RC and all that stuff, you can always follow me on my other YouTube RC channel and the link to that is in the description below as well. And again, looking at something like the 533, we keep on just kind of like increasing our scope of what we're doing. This has got a square pixels sensor, like four by three type of image, looks great, no amp glow. It's a newer sensor, even though it's been out for like three or four years now, maybe more, but it's very clean. Some people will actually image and not even use dark frames when they take pictures with these type of sensors. Some people don't even do it anyway, because honestly, 
the processing power that we have in things like PixInsight and AstroPixel Processor now do such a great job at integrating and removing noise. We've got things like uh, Noise Exterminator. We've got the new Graxpert 3.0 with the AI stuff going on. That some of this stuff actually is going to start to become insignificant. The cooling, for example. But one thing that is never going to become insignificant is the size of the sensor. So really, it comes down to budget and what you want to get yourself into. Right now, for Galaxy Season, the 585 Pro with like a smaller Newtonian is going to be just an amazing, amazing thing. Like I've been eyeing that new Apertura 6-inch Newtonian that's out. That is a great value, and I'm always looking for value when it comes to astrophotography because we can do it easy, but we can also save a buck. We don't need to keep spending thousands of dollars on equipment chasing some dream that we don't even really know what we're chasing. But if you want to get into astrophotography, you're looking for a great camera, or if you're looking for a nice smaller sensor to team up with something that you have to like really reach out there for planetary or lunar imaging, then the 585 is definitely going to be the way to go. But I would say definitely get that pro version. So you get those USB on ports on the back. You're going to want those things someday. So that's going to do it guys. Appreciate you all. Love y'all. Peace.